It's even, it's much more important, much more grave than just following the instructions of a physician. Um, this is on the transcendental platform that we don't realize that we've been taking birth again and again and having to suffer the reactions of our previous activities. And so devotional service means um, nice karmya. It means that there's no reaction. When we perform devotional service, there is no karmic reaction. There's no suffering that follows with that. I wanted to see if anybody, if any of those personal examples I gave sparked any memories in anyone where they, where they either followed some, they either surrendered to a process or some instruction, doesn't have to be, could be, you know, something in life or something in Krishna consciousness where they feel like they were steered around some difficulty or they didn't follow some instruction they were given and they came across some great difficulty that gave them a deep realization. Thank you. Yes, prasadam is transcendental. So my example is not perfect, but... No, they your Prabhupada did not place he wanted this and that and not that and not that. Even, even prasadam has to be according to the guest. It's not like give anything. I don't agree with that. It's That's also true. Home. Both. Yeah, both. Like, for example, I mean, on for the deities, we don't offer things like maybe that are already partially prepared, like tofu. I mean, some temples may offer, you know, <coughs> tofu. They don't have the same means, but we can offer this thing to Krishna. But if that's all we have, he will accept. He accepts the offering in our heart. But in the same regard, yes, we try to know what are the special, f you know, even the fragrances and the types of flowers that Krishna likes. We can offer any flower that we have, he will accept it because he's accepting the love in our heart. But maybe he, do, he does like specific flowers. They're listed in the, um, in, the, in the scripture. So both, I think. Both have very good points. Thank you. And in the purple Prabhupada, at the end he's saying, if you're chanting Hare Krishna, that is very good. You are all the karmas and all the automatic changes by chanting Hare Krishna. So the process which provides them is very good for us. And <coughs> we think that when we, we feel that we had a lot of change, maybe 30 years, 40 years, we are in a woman, we find that before 40 years we were doing all this nonsense. But now we are not doing those one. And Krishna is saving us by chanting his name. The more we are chanting, the more we see that we are getting some purification. And we forget the, our previous uh, activities what we were doing. Yeah, so this is the prescription, right, to practice. This, by connecting with the spiritual master, we, we can practice. If we don't have a, a, a spontaneous attachment to Krishna, we have to practice some sadhana. And through that sadhana, we develop our Krishna consciousness. And the sadhana is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, yes, and then follow the regular principles so that we protect our investment in chanting. We don't continue to sin and gain karma and then have to purify with the mantra, we actually can advance if we protect that investment by following the principles. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. So, 
Yes, Prabhu? No? Okay, okay. So, uh, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada, he refers to chapter 6, uh, specifically verse 647. Yogina mapi sarve shang madgate nantar atmana sharavan bhajate yomang same yuktatamo mataha. And of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. So in chapter 6, after Krishna gives Arjuna a description of different, different yogic processes, he says of all of these types of yoga, bhakti is the highest. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela, chapter 8, um, the talks between Ramananda Roy and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's a very nice discussion between them where um, it started by Shaitanya Mahaprabhu asking Ramananda Roy, what, how, tell me a process by which you can achieve the ultimate goal of life. And, init and initially Ramananda Roy, the first answer he gives is that, well, you can execute your prescribed duties in your, in your social uh, situation. And in that way you can achieve Krishna consciousness. And he, all, he quotes a verse from the, one of the Puranas, and which talks about um, Daivi Van Arsham. And Lord Chaitanya says, no, this is an external process, referring to that this is a material process. And he says, you need to give me another means to achieve the ultimate goal of life. <laughs> so then Ramananda Rory then quotes 927 from Bhagavad Gita, exactly. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, this is also external. This is also a material process. And in that purport, it's chapter 8, text 61, uh, Srila Prabhupada says that, that yes, we can, we, can, we can surrender whatever we do, whatever activities are to Krishna. And in that way, we're recognizing that Krishna is the, is the supreme. But at the same time, there, it is not unmotivated. There is some motivation there. There is some karma. It's not without reaction. It's not nice karma. It's not devotional. Ser it's not pure devotional service. It is a step on the path in, of devotional service. So in in Bhagavad Gita, chapter twelve, text. Texts 8, 9, 10, and 11, Krishna describes different ways that we can make progress in devotional service. And he's very ecumenical in the sense that he, he says, well, if you can practice this way, you can practice this way. You know? And if you can't do that, he, he makes it very simple. He <laughs> simplifies it for us so that anyone can start to practice devotional service in some way. So in 12.9 he says, If you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regular principles of bhakti yoga. In this way, develop a desire to attain me. So if, we're not, if we cannot spontaneously practice devotional service, we can practice sadhana bhakti, which is practice a regulative practice of Krishna consciousness so that we can develop a taste for Krishna and we can develop a more spontaneous attachment to Krishna, to serving Krishna. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada says that these, this process needs to be followed through uh, the teachings and guidance of a spiritual master. So, and this is what Bhagavad Gita is, an, is all about, is Arjun listening to Krishna and taking Krishna, who is his friend and his cousin, but then taking Krishna as his spiritual master. He says in the second chapter, Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. 
In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So this is our mood that in practicing bhakti yoga, we can develop some relationship with Krishna by making a connection with the spiritual master. And, be, and Srila Prabhupada is the shiksha guru for all of us in that way. And through our relationship with Srila Prabhupada and following the instructions of Srila Prabhupada and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and, f and we can, and also making connections with devotees who are more, who are more advanced than us and becoming inspired by their faith, by their de and becoming inspired and developing faith and enthusiasm through their enthusiasm. Um, we can deepen our, our appreciation for Krishna consciousness and our spiritual practice. And at some point, we may come into contact with our spiritual master, someone who can strengthen our connection with Srila Prabhupada. So when we follow this process of devotional service, we should experience some changes. So if we're saying that when we perform devotional service, we get, there's no, there's, it's, there's no karmic reaction. We should experience some change, some positive benefit. Even though, may, even though it, we're practicing without motivation, if we're doing something that's not going to bring us karma, we should maybe see a difference, right? Wouldn't you expect? And so you can see this in, in devotees who, are, who, their, who their lives have changed. Um, I mean, if you look at Srila Prabhupada's disciples and, uh, as an example and see how, they, how their lives have changed from when they first met Srila Prabhupada to when they joined the Hare Krishna movement um, and until today how they're still inspired and how they're still happy and they're still practicing devotional service after so many years. Um, in this way, we can see that that this process is it does work and it and it um, and when and it and it can be ha we, it can make us happy um, and the only way to really experience it is we have to is by chanting and seeing and seeing for ourselves by chanting Hare Krishna in a way that's in, in a way that's regulated um, just like anything else that we do if we do it sort of haphazardly we'll, we'll we, we, may, we may get ha a haphazard result, but if we do it w in a regulated way, we'll get a different, we'll get a different result, a quicker result. Um, for example, Prabhupada recommends that we chant 16 rounds of, of Hare Krishna every day. I mean, I know when I, f when I first met devotees, I c could not get my mind around that uh, amount of time it would take to chant 16 rounds. Um, but I was not discouraged. The devotees suggested that I just start by chanting one round a day. And I th thought that that, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen minutes, however long, you know, it took me in the beginning to chant one round, I could commit to that. I could commit to ten or fifteen minutes every day to chanting. And gradually, I developed a taste for chanting. Then I found that I was walking around campus chanting. And then I started carrying my beads so that I could so that I could chant wherever I was. And then I started making a deeper commitment to myself because I didn't have a personal spiritual master at the time. And I said, okay, I, I'm going to increase it to two rounds per day, and then I and then to four rounds. And I didn't have an altar and I didn't have deities, um, but I had uh, had a copy of the Srimad Bhagavatam that that a devotee gave to me. And I started offering, you know, boga to my set of Srimad Bhagavatams. And I would chant in front of my Srimad Bhagavatams. Um, and then eventually, even though I didn't realize it, I had met my spiritual master many years before I realized that this was my spiritual master. Even before I wasn't looking for a spiritual master, I didn't know who a spiritual master was, what the qualities of a spiritual master was. But I had already started to develop a relationship with someone who, was, who would become my spiritual master. Um, and the people around me were also become my god brothers. 
And looking back now, I, I had really didn't have any idea that, that, that that's how my life would turn out. But that, that was what was happening. And it happened because uh, I surrendered to the process that Srila Prabhupada has given us. And I was talking with my wife the other day about how, oh, if I didn't, if I didn't meet, you know, if, if my spiritual master didn't meet um, Dina Bandhu Prabhu, then he wouldn't have become a devotee. And if he didn't become a devotee, then I would have never had Krishna Prashadam in Gainesville, Florida. If I would have never had Krishna Prashadam in Gainesville, Florida, I would have never started chanting. If I never started chanting, I would have never met, I would have never met you. And I would have never met, in, the, in so many ways my life would be different now. Um, and I can see how even Krishna consciousness has touched the lives of those around me, in my family, even though it's in more of an indirect way because they're, they're not devotees, but they're, they're friends of the devotees, I would say, and they're, they're favorable, but they're not, they're not interested. But still, they, in so many ways, it's benefited those around me who don't, who are not have a direct connection to Krishna consciousness. The people at my work, who all know I'm vegetarian, and I'll make sure that there's, you know, if there's ever some, uh, like, talk at my work, they bring, ve they have vegetarian food there. Um, and they inquire about my, and they inquire about my life in different ways that allow for preaching. Um, yeah, because there's no, there's no one in my office with a Sika. I mean, I don't go to work with Tilak and Doti, but um, people still know that I'm a devotee um, just by developing personal connections with people and just being, just being nice to people. Um, and it's not that I wasn't nice before I became a devotee, but at the same time, as learning cr the process of Krishna consciousness, we learn really what touches other people's hearts and really what they're looking for because everybody's looking for Krishna. And when you know really what everybody's looking for and what everyone needs, then you, you have the opportunity to develop deeper relationships with people, not just in ways that are superficial. So I've, so I've, seen, in, I've seen in my experience, and, I, and I'd like to hear from you if, if you've also been practicing Krishna consciousness for a short period of time or for a long period of time, but in what ways have you experienced that by practicing devotional service your life has changed and maybe in some way you've touched the lives of others around you even if it's in an indirect way? Hare Krishna. Jai Hare Krishna. That 
That reminds me of uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam class yesterday where Maharaj said, um, he said, it's commonly quoted Guru Saru Sastra, but he said Sastra Saru Guru because the Sastra is coming to you through the Guru. So actually Sastra is first, Krishna is first. So I really, I really appreciate that about Bhagavad Gita. Thank you, Guru. Don't worry, you are not obliged to give me money. 
I give you this gift. No, 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 go away. So I, I my friend, okay, no, no problem. I went out and I became like crazy in the sense, okay, now I enter every shop, I give these biscuits for free to everyone. So I did. And I, I entered and shop, this is for you, this is for you. Why? Because, you know, it's a tasty gift. And, and then, incredibly, at the end of the day, people get, get more money. It's, in, it's incredible. It, it, it happened many, many times that I enter in a, like in a place where people are gambling. No. And I told them, why? No, these people are wasting so much money. That's so stupid. And so I, I give everyone biscuits. For free, take this biscuits. The next shop, people were coming to me, please, please, what, what is this? What is that? And they give money. And they, I'm so, sorry, I thought Krishna is so, in so, he likes but that we are generous to people, we are kind to people. It's really, it was a very good lesson for me that to be, when we are honest, is uh, so much appreciated in that. Uh, okay. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> no, that was a perfect example. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Yes. Sadhana Bhakti is the practice of devotional service. So when, we're ch when we first start chanting, we are chanting with offense because we, we don't know. We're, but, we're, but still, it's important to chant, even if we don't know what the offenses are. So it's called um, Nama Parad. As we start chanting more and more, we, our mind becomes purified and we start chanting Nama Bas, which is the clearing stage, so less offenses. We know what the offenses are. We know not, we gain knowledge, we gain realization from chanting japa, so we make less and less offenses. And then we, then we chant Suranam, which is chanting the pure name offenselessly. So in that practice of sadhana bhakti, we start developing more and more, more taste for Krishna, more, um, more attachment for Krishna, um, an art and a vritti happens, we get rid of unwanted things. So in the beginning, yes, we are, we're doing mixed, a mixed process, which is okay. That we, that's, the way we, that's the way we start. But then as we do the process longer, we start to become more and more purified. So there's less and less karma. Yeah. I'm also talking about not only what you mean, but when we do the service, and sometimes we do the service in the temple, but we have internal motivation or not pure motivation, so we're still making some kind of Some, it's mixed. According to the motivation, we have It's according to the per individual person and their, their level of, of, uh, of, like you said, like motivation, or their level of um, spiritual advancement, you could say. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm actually very happy to see this uh, this line because um, I'm having a little bit of confusion being here in India. I live in America. I live in New York where we have a lot of similarly homeless people, people who are very needy. And But here in India, the need can be kind of overwhelming just because you see you go five steps, another person asks you for something. So um, I'm just having some inner conflict because the teaching says on one level, see me everywhere. Every person see me in that person. And so I try to do that and I want to give and offer some comfort or something. But I feel on some level like I am just, I would just giving all the time. And also there's some like, I think there's another line about how you have to give at the right time, right. the right person. Mm -hmm. 
And so I just feel like a little bit of conflict and some confusion might be about that. So if you can kind of link it with this verse with that we read today about whatever you give, whatever you offer, give it as if you give it to me. So I could give rupees or whatever and think I'm giving it to Lord Krishna, but I just wonder like what the, just in terms of charity on the street level. Sure, that's a good question. So this is why we do prasadam distribution, because Srila Prabhupada wanted that no people within, I forget the exact distance from the temple should be without prasadam. So by supporting the temple, in a way you're helping the people that are living around the temple automatically. Um, so by coming and doing charity at the temple, and by doing service at the temple, and helping maintain the temple in that way, you're helping those people also. And then I would say also another example is that I went on, um, I went with Dina Bandhu Prabhu um, recently to Barna, um, Barnasham, uh, Barshana, and he he suggested that we buy some sweets, some candies, and offer them and give them out to the people because we were there for three four hours and we must have come across you know maybe I mean. Maybe less than a hundred, but many, but many people that were asking for like donations, and it's not. It really is almost impractical to give everybody a donation. So, we we gave out little candies that we had offered. So that's a, that's sort of another like consolation that you can do in that way. You're welcome. Hare Krishna. Hare As we see in everyone Krishna is there, we, are, we like to give them everything. But sometimes, to passage, you get the reaction of their karmas. If I am giving somebody 10 rupees, and he goes and smokes or drinks alcohol or something, so that reaction I am getting. Although I am thinking, thinking that Krishna is in him, but the reaction which I am getting unknowingly, which I am not aware that he is going to drink alcohol or he is going to smoke or any nonsense things he is going to do. I am not aware of that, but I think Krishna is in heart and I give him. So, what do you suggest about that? So, it may seem that we give less often. Like your example is, it seems like if I'm being asked to give very often. And we think because we're not giving very often, we're not giving enough, or that it's wrong in some way. But like Prabhu is saying, if we give less often, but we give at the right time, it's actually better. It's actually better for the person we're giving to, and it's actually also better for us, because it's in the mode of goodness. Thank you very much for such nice questions. I really appreciate it. Srila Prabhupada ki, Bhagavad Gita ki, Vrindavan Dham ki, Gaur Premanandi.